I tell you what, what you really need to hear. It's not always what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And the reason I do that is I put myself in the shoes of that struggling trader 20 something years ago. And I wish somebody would have told me all of these things. Now, markets go up and markets go down. You tell people this and they look at you like you pooed your pants. But the thing is, as soon as the market starts going down, they begin to reason and rationalize. And one thing I thought about last week is that if a market never went down, then there would not be a market. Everybody would buy, everybody would be fully invested, and it no longer would be a market. Markets would no longer exist. So the, the going down is actually occasionally healthy. Like right now, I'm 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 not glad in my own personal portfolio, but as a general statement, as a trader, I am glad that the market has pulled back and that's shaken out some loose, uh, loose hands, some uh, weak hands, uh, maybe loose, fast and loose money is what I'm thinking about. And it can often clear the way for the market to go higher. Uh, the Johnny come lately is those who rush in to buy as the market is making new highs are usually the worst traders. They have very little staying power and they're out at the first signs of adversity. But once they get flushed out of the system, kind of like in a TKO move or just a generic pullback, then that can often clear the way for the market to trade higher. So there's also a psychology in it too, in that number one, those that have got knocked out might look to rush right back in and that could give the market a bit of a push. And number two, in something like a TKO type of move, that's when you have a wide range of bar down after market makes a recent new high, it's a it's a form of pullback, but it's called a trend knockout. The eager shorts pile on, and, and I know there's some eager shorts piling onto this market. I don't spend a lot of time in any form other than my own, but every now and then I'll take a peek or something will get alerted to me on Facebook or whatever. And some guy said, you'd have to be a knob if you're not shorting this market because the RS is greater than 80 or whatever the case may be, RSI, I guess. And I chimed in and said, well, Buying oversold and selling overbought will work until it don't. So he's kind of lulled into a false sense of security. And, and William Eckert has a really good quote on that. Things that feel good over the short term are disastrous longer term. And percentage win rate could be adversely related to longer term performance. And you can do really well over a short period of time with that type of trading. The problem is you end up with the like the old commodity adage, eat like a bird and shit like an elephant. You have a few really, really big losses, and that kind of wipes out everything. It can be mentally demoralizing, too. Knob equals newbie. Okay, so you got to be a newbie, IIRC. What is IRC, John? <laughs> I thought he meant like a newbie. You know, you'd have to be a total uh, idiot, a total new, new to trading idiot not to do this. And I'm thinking there's no direct relationships that you're an idiot for not doing certain things unless it's something stupid like not honoring your stop or things like that now one thing i thought about uh, over new year's eve i attended a party i had two parties actually but it, that's that's a whole uh, another story uh but uh there was a lady there that that i, I loaned her my book a while back and she was like uh, she's kind of freaking out because her retirement account was evaporating back in october and I said, just read the first chapter of the layman's guide to trading stocks. And I talk a lot about how the fact that the market doesn't always go up and et cetera. And back in October, like I said, as things were coming unglued, I really worked, she was really worried about the market. I'm like, okay, read this chapter and understand a little bit about market timing. And then I saw her at the party, you know, what's that, uh, two months later? And she told me, my guy did a pretty good job last year. Well, gosh darn, he sure did. The market went up 20 something percent and your portfolio went up 20 something percent. Now you've forgotten, you've already forgotten that in October, you were freaking out a little bit when this thing was imploded, imploding. Now I got out, okay, with the TFM 10% system and then I got back in. So the buy and hold types have beaten me in a market like this and they will beat you unless the market occasionally goes down which it does so that's a little something that i know everybody here tonight understands but i thought it was something to just kind of throw out there that 
the markets will lull you into a false sense of security that you should hold on. And years ago, I met somebody after the market had crashed or something, and he's like, I'm so glad I held on. I wish I'd have bought more. I'm thinking to myself, oh, the market is training you to be such a horrible trader, but I digress. Anyway, so market timing only works when the market doesn't snap right back. So when you get into an extended bear market, market timing works out really nicely because it gets you out the way for those diaper change moments, so to speak. Now, I would also argue, and I've made this argument quite a few times, if you go back to the pandemic, when the market imploded, and I think it dropped about 30% after the signal, don't quote me on that, it might have only been 28 or 25, but it was a lot, it was substantial. I had a friend of mine that wasn't sleeping at night, and fortunately for him, it all came back. I'm guessing he didn't sell, but eventually it won't come back. And also, if you get out of the market and you get out of the way, when things begin to come unglued a little bit, then you could sleep at night, then you could regroup. And when the time comes and the market starts going back up again, then you can get back in. As I preach nearly every week, as Greg Moore says, whipsaw is a frustrating, bear markets are devastating. You can survive frustration. So again, market timing only works when the market doesn't come right back.